We've all been in this situation before. You're at your local card store or at your school or wherever you play Yu-Gi-Oh! And someone comes up to you and just says, Yo, you got any trades? Flustered and caught off guard, you reach your hand into your backpack, just pull something out and you're just like, I, I got some trades, I think they're in this box. <sighs> okay, the ones that uh, face down aren't for trade, alright? Oh, you're looking for in insectors? Uh, I think I got some, I think I just gotta check my binder. Uh, real quick, um, wash the sheets. I think they're all broken. Let me, let me see if I can find it. Uh, 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 uh. Hey guys, it's Double Costner, here, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about trade binders. So, like in all trading card games, players need an efficient and mobile way to store their cards, but just not like one of those two guys in the beginning of this video. So I know those two examples were mainly satire. They're mainly over exaggerations, but I've seen them in real life. You've seen them in real life. And I know for a fact that every single Yugo player out there was once one of those two examples, myself included. So when I was younger, guys, which wasn't a long time ago, honestly, um, I didn't have a nice binder. I didn't have an awesome collection. All I had were stacks of random cards that I tied with rubber bands and ended up looking super silly and unprofessional. The thing is that us casual and budget players don't need to have a bank breaking collection, yet we can still look clean and professional with what we have. Even starting a collection is hard enough with those who are just beginning their collection or just starting to trade at school or something. That's why I'm starting a new series on this channel called The Budget Player's Guide, starting with episode one, How to Start a Trade Binder, guys. Not only am I going to discuss the different types of storage options, but I'm also going to explain just how to start a collection in the first place. So the next time you're at Locals, you can be proud of what you have and show it in a professional way. Again, this series has a budget and casual Yugo player in mind, just like the rest of the videos on this channel. So if that's who you are, or if that's what you're looking for, feel free to subscribe for more videos in the future. With that out of the way, guys, uh, let's go. All right, guys, I'm starting off with the regular school three ring binder. I'm usually starting with a three ring binder because a lot of beginner duelists, a lot of beginner players usually have a three ring binder, not only because they use it for school, but it's very easy to find at Walmart or Office Depot or whatever. And also the sheets are very easy to find as well. Like um, when I was a kid, especially my parents wouldn't really buy me cards. They'd buy me these sheets to, to store my cards because usually my cards would go everywhere. So not only is it very cheap and budget option for sure, but it's good for parents. Usually they would like to spend their money on that. And the actual cards, again, depends on your parents, of course, also depends on the time frame, because that was like, what, like 10 years ago. But pros and cons of the like regular just school binder. So initial uh, con, I would say, is that usually if this is the trading binder video, right? Usually trading binders are a lot slimmed out, a lot more concise of what they have, because you want to bring the locals cards that are worth trading, cards that are valuable. And usually that wouldn't be your entire collection. So I would by no means have a trade, trade binder that, that's this big, guys. So I've seen people rock the three ring binder. I've seen it before. I went to nationals, of course, and I, I saw people rock it, and I saw, you know what, it's not that bad. But the thing is, their binder was nowhere near this big. So of course, um, along with the size of this binder especially, is that um, durability-wise, it isn't the best. So this binder I have right now says uh, Pokemon Battle Frontier, because I've had this since that anime came out, that anime, that cartoon, whatever you guys want to know, but um, durability wise, it isn't the best because this thing is already broken, um, that's just because I had a lot of cards in it, but just the, just like looking at the like sleeves, right, these cards will easily come out if they're not sleeved, and back then I didn't have any sleeves back then, so durability wise, the binder can easily break, um, just like shoving this in your binder, uh, shoving this in your backpack, I'm sorry, shoving this in your backpack, it'll shake around. That binder isn't really made to do that, even though binders are made for school stuff, right, of course. But with cards, it's sort of a different thing. Along with just, like, the sheets in general. The sheets, um, they usually, they don't really make sheets for Yu-Gi-Oh! sized cards, like, usually the salt, small Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, right? These are usually made for Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, what have you, um. So, these cards do fall out a lot. So, if you were to use the three ring school binder-esque thing, right, I'd recommend um, not a lot of sheets, of course, because it's a train binder, and then sleeving your cards, or maybe double sleeving your cards so they fit snug in here. Again, the different binders have different properties to them, like you can get a five-star binder. I know, as a student myself, I know five-star five -star binder is pretty good. So it depends on the kind of binder you have, it depends on the kind of sheets you have. So one quick tip I just have is that I'm using Ultra Pro sheets right now, but I'm also using like this other like non-brand sheets right now because it doesn't have the Ultra Pro uh, logo right here. 
That's because my parents, they gave me, they kept on buying me sheets, right? But I recommend is to not use different brand sheets for the same binder because the holes are placed in different locations. So when you want to like put the entire stack on a three ring binder, it's going to be different. Also, that has some use of why it broke because I keep on like breaking the things in general. But um, but as, you, as you can see in this binder, it does its job. It doesn't look that bad. It's, it's a lot better than stuffing all your cards in a box. It's a lot better than having no binder at all. But if you want to step up your game, I'd recommend some other options. So again, this binder what I have for now is just for home stuff. It's for use to store my cards. Used to uh, store some like um, what they call some sets, some archetypes, or whatever. That's basically it. So on to the next job. On to the next binder. Excuse me. All right, let's go. Guys, right, so next up is I don't really know what to call this, but I'm gonna call it the super classic, the super old blue eyes Kyber four pocket binder. So, the Konami released this a long time ago, they released it along with like the uh, old sets, but recently Konami is re-releasing um, a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh supplies, Yu-Gi-Oh card supplies that is uh, Kaiba Corporation based. So, they, are, they do have a Yu-Gi-Oh Kaiba Corporation 4 pocket with a 9 pocket as well. I just want to make this uh, binder a little bit different because this binder is different because it's specifically made for Yu-Gi-Oh trading cards or just cards in general. Unlike the other binder, which is usually made for a school, like the three pocket binders, right? So, if you can look in, they don't really have any three rings at all. They just have these sort of sleeve things. These are a little bit different than the Kyber Corporations because the Kyber Corporations are a little bit better in that they're uh, side loaders. These are just regular old um, binders, which you can like just top loading. Um. So, this is a little bit different because it's a lot smaller, right? It's a four pocket, so it's useful for as a trade binder to go to, lo uh, to, go to locals or whatever because you can um, put in here uh, a lot of the more valuable cards that you have, a lot of the uh, trade bait, as people like to say. So not only is it useful, it's mobile, right? It's very, very small, like my hands right this. It's um good for mobile, good for transportation. It's pretty durable, unlike the three ring, because there's no obnoxious three ring that three rings right here that can um, maybe injure your cards, maybe damage your cards. Um, I, do, I do think you still need to um, Sleeve, sleeve these cards. Like I mean, these these uh, these cards are unsleeved right here, but I think they're gonna fall out soon-ish. So I make sure to sleeve all my cards, especially if they're in my trade binder, right? But again, pros: it's mobile, it's pretty durable, more durable than the other ones. Um, it's very light. It's very good for trading. Cons-ish, um, especially this old one. Like again, this old binder is again, it's more than ten years old, guys. A pretty old guy. Um, durability, um, again, ten years. I mean, you gotta buy more binders, especially after 10 years. But for the new ones, the new Bukaba Corporation ones, I think they're pretty good, especially for budget players, because the reason I chose this as well is that um, you can find these binders, um, find the Kaiba Corporations at like Walmart or Target, not necessarily your local card game store, because I know a lot of you budget players, a lot of you casual players, some of y'all are kids, and you really can't really drive to those comic comic stores, those local card shops, right? You can usually go to Walmart or Target with your parents when you're going grocery shopping at all. So I'm pretty sure you can find these as well. It's a it's a, a way better option than the three ring binders. Um, so let's go on to the last one. All right, my last binder I have for you guys today is a monster protected binder, or there could be other options for this kind of binder. Again, there are a lot of videos on YouTube about like other good trading card binders. I prefer monsters myself, but I've, I've heard that the Ultra Pro regular binders with the strap is pretty good. I've heard Dex Protect is pretty good, but um, I especially like the monster because it has a super sleek, slim, green, translucent thing. Also, I got a really good price on it. Uh, for like $12, $13, $13, $14 with free shipping on Amazon. So I got a really great deal. So again, before I start, these binders aren't going to be the sort of budget options you can find at Walmart or Target. These binders are going to be bought online. And if you do your searching, if you do your um, do your research, you can find a good price on it. Because usually these monster binders, they sort of retail for $30. You can find them for $20. I, find my, I found mine for $12, $13 because people didn't really like this green color. Um, the other colors are a bit more expensive, but as for the binder itself, it does a lot greater job than the three ring binders do. So again, you don't see any three rings at all. It's a lot slimmer design, so it doesn't really have that, that extra bulk that the rings would have, right? So not only is it sleek, it's slim, you can easily fit this in your backpack, but also it does a good job in protecting this card, so it has this sort of um, protecting layer in the beginning. It doesn't, really do, it doesn't really do that much protecting, but it does something, again, also these these pockets these uh whatever these pockets these um 
these pages, they are made for cards, right? So they are a side loader, so you can easily slide them on the side, so they don't really fall out as easily. So it does its, it does its job in protection, right? So um, you can easily put this in your backpack, and if you shake it, cards won't fly out anywhere. And again, they usually last long-ish, so I had this binder for, I want to say two months, which isn't a lot, right? But it's looking brand new, even when I've been bringing it to like uh, my locals, to nationals, whatever. It does its job. It's a lot better than the three-ring binder. So again, pros and cons. So pros, not only, um, not only, all right, pros, all right, pros. So it's very sleek and can fit in your backpack. It is good enough for trading at locals because you can usually put all your good cards in here. It's not really meant for storage, but you can be for storage. And again, it just looks professional, right? Because um, you don't want to be that person who has like a crap binder, right? Um, if someone asks me, hey, do you have any trades? Boom, I just give him this binder. It looks nice, whatever. Cons, it is more expensive, so it's not really the budget option, but I, rec I, I suggest that it's a very good investment for all you budget casual players. Um, just spend the $20 maximum. Don't spend any more than $20, because you can find this for cheaper. But spend the $20 maximum to, for this type of binder. Again, you can buy the Ultra Pros, you can buy the Dex Protectors. Dex Protectors are pretty more expensive, but spend the money, guys. It looks super nice. Um, show your cards in a way that looks nice and you can be proud of showing those cards. Um, so the next part of the video, I'm going to show you guys just how to make a, um, a collection in the first place. Alright guys, this is probably the most important part of the video, which is just how to start a collection in the first place. I know you guys are pretty casual, pretty budget, so you starting from nothing. It's very, very difficult to make a binder add nothing. And a lot of you guys are a bit younger, so you guys don't really have a car to go to locals. You don't really have your own income to pay for your own cards. You just have to ask for your parents. So I get it. It's very hard. I've been in the same place. So hopefully I can show you guys how to really start your own collection. So this binder I made in two months. So all these cards in this binder, I, I, I didn't really have it all until like two months ago. So hopefully I can share my own experience to y'all so you guys can have a sort of more understanding just how, how to make this binder. So. Right now, I want to show you guys how to make your own binder, how to make your own collection. So right now, hopefully you guys paid attention to the first part of the video. So you should have a binder right now. Hopefully you have a monster binder. Hopefully you have, maybe you have an ultra pro binder. Maybe you have a three ring binder. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you don't have any more just tens of blank cards. We're better than that, guys. We're starting clean, professional, as good budget players should be. So let's go on to the first page. So the first page on my binder is a bunch of double costumes. So I opened, um, I ordered a bunch of double costs in the mail just to start my own collection, right? So I chose something for myself. So it's very important for your binder, for your trade binder to be not only unique, but individualistic and make it your own, guys. So as me, I'm double costed on YouTube. Uh, it's one of my favorite cards and it's a good creature in general, guys. So not only did I order a bunch of them online, which didn't really cost a lot, it cost like $2 for like, um, what, 15 Again, uh, it looks like it's a complete waste of money, but it fills this binder for two pages and it makes my binder its own thing, makes it unique, right? So I challenge you guys to find your own card that you want to collect, right? So a lot of people, they've been collecting their own sort of cards. I know uh, Z the Zeef on YouTube, he's another YouTuber. He he's collecting, um, he collects some card. A lot of other YouTubers collect other cards. A lot of people I saw at Nationals, they're collecting other cards, right? So you can jump on the bandwagon. Again, it makes your binder unique. Also, it fills in those pages if you're lacking uh, your own part of the collection. So that was one of the first pages, right? And the next page is just what I call trade bait. So trade bait is very, very important in the collection, right? So trade bait basically is cards that are very valuable to trade, right? So if you go, if you go to a local or whatever and you give them the binder, hopefully you put all your trade bait either in the first page or in the second page so they can easily see it, right? And again, you might ask, hey, double cost, and where do I get this trade bait from, right? As a budget player, it's very, very hard to find cards worth trading, right? Because usually you want to buy singles as a budget player, right? Because that's the best that's the best option for you to buy a deck is to buy singles, right? And if you're buying singles, there's no point in buying cards that you don't need, right? You wouldn't buy cards just so you could trade with somebody else, right? Unless you're like a vendor or something, right? But again, I think the best way to find cards that are worth trading is just to buy packs. And again, uh, it might be some red flags here as a as a budget player. You shouldn't really, you shouldn't really be buying packs, right? But if you're going to locals and you're earning packs and you have a bit of extra money, um, you should actually just buy packs because some packs they will get you a lot of cards. So, for example, I bought a shit ton of Dark Saviors 
and I got a bunch of dark bunch of dark savior cards um worth actually trading for right sky strikers are pretty valuable um vampires sure they're pretty valuable as well along with um some other cards i just got lucky in right so again the huge luck factor of just buying i mean just getting good cards but so i would recommend buying dark saviors a good, it's, a, it's still a good pack that you can buy get a lot of cards worth valuable for uh buy battle legends 2 right so again there's a it's very very valuable set all the cards are holographic right and then Chances are you're gonna get some good cards that people would want, right? It doesn't, it doesn't even have to be that expensive, right? So, Kagaris, they're worth like a dollar right now, but people still want Kagaris, and if, I mean, it's still good trade value, right? So, buy Battle Legends 2, because all the cards are holographic, and a lot of the cards are very good trade bait. Buy Dark Saviors, again, all the cards are holographic. Again, just buy those good sets, and hopefully you guys get lucky, but I, re I do recommend those two sets just to get trade bait, right? So, again, uh, to recap, right? Buy cards online that it just like just buy good common cards that you can um, fill your first page with, or just put the star collection right now of something that you like, right? Make it your own, right? It doesn't have to be a single card. It could be like a bunch of trap holes, right? Just make it make make your binder your own, right? And then the second page is just um, finding cards that's worth that's pretty valuable. And then what I recommend is just buy is just get pulling cards and packs, which isn't really the best option, but if you do want something, I mean like I mean like I just got super lucky with the afterburner, right? Okay, so, and then the next part is just like your other decks, right? So, some of you guys are gonna have like a few decks that you're, that you're running, or maybe just have one deck, right? But once you played a lot and you try, maybe I should play this deck, right? What you gonna do with the old deck, right? I recommend putting them into your binder, right? If you don't want anymore, it's good trade value, right? So, I have my time with Gustos, right? But I think it's time for the Gustos to goose go or just go away, right? I may have a terrible pun, but um, Honestly, some people are interested in this deck, right? Also, it looks super clean, right? Uh, having this entire deck out in front of me, like, they're all holographic. It looks very, very nice. If people want the Gustos, they're my binder for sure, right? So, again, to recap, make your binder your own. Find your own sort of niche, your own collection. Pull buy packs. I mean, I'm not telling you buy packs, but, like, if you did buy packs, you pull some great cards in, put them right here, especially Dark Savers and Battle Legends and stuff. And then your, the decks that you played before, if you're not playing them anymore, put them in your trade binder, right? If you don't really want to keep them, right? Again, it looks very, very nice. Um, also, I put all my XCs in here, right? So all your extra XCs, all your extra synchros, they look very nice in a binder all together. Like, they all look all black as well. There's another example for you guys. Um, I have played Chaos Dragons. They're one of my favorite decks. So, like, not only do um, not only is this binder, like, good for players that want to see like good cards right it also shows um the history of my of Yu-Gi-Oh that i played right i played gustos right i played chaos dragons back then so it's like basically um a trip in time almost more lights one stuff more chaos stuff right um this is just more dark savior stuff right so again um once you buy dark savior you're gonna have a lot of just like extra super rares that you're gonna get that honestly i'm not gonna deal with right but people might want these Kura Bandits, they might want these Horror of the Phantom Beasts, right? And so I have them in my trade binder as well. So, and again, I have, to the left you have, like, good, just holographic cards that people play, or used to play, honestly. Like, people don't play Lance or Blake Disco anymore, but back then those cards were dope as hell. I have more Dark Savior stuff, I have more OTS pack stuff, better than the locals, right? And again, I have, or just lastly, I have um, the deck that I want to build, right? So, just a quick update on me. I've been trying to buy Mermails because I, I have a job now. I, I've been interested in getting Mermails, right? So I've been trying to buy Mermails. I've been putting them in this binder right now. So hopefully this video showed you something a little bit about like the whole the whole journey is to find a binder. Because honestly, guys, if you go to locals, you go anywhere. Anyone who plays Yu-Gi-Oh, you're going to see them have a trade binder. And if you're at that stage where like you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, but you don't really have a binder yet, it's sort of uncomfortable, right? Like you, start, you have a lot of questions of how to like get there, right? If you're if you're a casual player and you want to become more advanced, it's super hard to sort of get there, right? So hopefully this video showed you guys a little bit, right? So hopefully it showed you guys how to start a collection, right? Basically how to start a collection is either you buy a collection yourself or you just buy trade bait, right? Just buy just fill your binder with something, right? It doesn't have to be the best cards, right? I just happen to have a job right now that I can afford a lot of these cards, right? So before I was budget, then Honestly, like, I bought all these Gustos for, like, $20, right? So, it th not only did it, like, it fill fulfill my chance of playing the deck in real life, but also it filled my trade binder for something, right? All these XCs is just me playing the game, right? It took me years to get all these XCs monsters. 
boom i can show that off like chaos dragons this is my first deck right i've been playing this for years and years and years now it's time to retire the deck so i put it on my trade binder right so honestly it takes time don't like I, I mean obviously Yu Gi Oh is a pay to win thing so if you have the money you can do whatever you want right but for budget casual players who have a limited income it just takes time to, to get there right so again buy an awesome binder buy an awesome collection hopefully you guys enjoyed it again feel free to give me a like and a subscription if you did like the video um this video is a huge jumble, jumble mess but um Hopefully we can get through it guys. So I think that's it guys. Double costing out. What's up guys?